I'm quite sure it's not everyone in, he in here who has seen my photos before. So before I start my speech, I'm going to let you have a look at some of my photos that I've done. Stories are told in a diff so many different ways. And most people write, most people speak, most people sing. For me, I chose photography to be a form of where I can use to tell my stories. I started photography four years ago. And before that, I was doing photography on an iPad. I was taking pictures of the sunrise, pictures of the sunset, flowers, anything that came my way, I was capturing. Until one day I posted a photo on Facebook and one of my colleagues told me, why can't you take up photography to be your source of income, to let it pay your bills? I never saw it that way. Well, every time I took a photo, posted it on Facebook, that's, those are the ways that I was told. Take it up, let it be your source of income and let it pay your bills. Well. Slow by slow, I set up my Instagram account and my Facebook account. I was still using an iPad and for taking photos, and I was still doing the sunrise, sunsets, the flowers, anything that came my way. In 2016, April, I was on Facebook where I found That Z Photographer. This is a keto based photographer. I reached out to him. It was a very hot day in April. I reached out to him. I introduced myself. And funny enough, the same day I wrote to him, he invited me at his place. We had a chat about photography, and the same day he invited me for an event that was going to have a week later, that was the Kitwe Color Festival that happened in 2016. He wanted me to be the second photographer. Trust me, I never had experience in operating a professional camera. That was my first day. And I never had a camera, so I had to look for a camera, which I had to pay for. I managed to find a camera, paid the guy. He charged me about 500 kwacha. Trust me, this camera was nothing worth 500 kwacha, but I paid 500 kwacha because I wanted to take these photos. Well, we shoot from morning up to 20 p.m. in the, in the evening. The following day, I went, I went at his place. He selected the photos, about 40 out of 2,000 photos that I got. I was a bit discouraged. Again, I was a bit in encouraged because this is a guy that has been doing photography for a long time and he went through my photos. He managed to get 40 best shots out of 2,000 photos that I got. He told me to work on. He showed me tricks. He taught me how to edit. And from that to now, he still encourages me. I continued taking photos, I continued practicing, I saved up, bought myself a camera, professional camera, and in mid-2016, I got an email from the organizers of uh, Zeke Music Creative Awards. They wrote and said they wanted me to present an award for the best Zambian photographer of the year. I was shocked. This is a guy who just studied photography I'm less than a year old in the industry. And then these guys write to me an email saying, we want you to host or present an award. Well, I went down to Lusaka, presented the award. I was given a very beautiful looking girl as my co-presenter. I was motivated for that. <laughs> yeah. When I was there, I met so many photographers that I looked up to. Most of them I just used to have a look at their works on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Interacting with them face to face was very motivating. And that kept me going forward and pushing myself on another level. I kept on working hard. I kept on accepting even free jobs so that I can get experience in this industry that I've taken up. 2017, I was nominated as under the best Zambian photographer by the Z Music Creative Awards. And 2017, in December, I won the award. I was excited, very happy, 
I can't describe how I felt, but I was happy. Winning the award came with so many responsibilities. Some say it's easy, but it's not easy. It came with so many responsibilities to a point that required me to change in certain things. Where well, I changed a few things, changed uh, my friends, changed uh, a lot of things, but I did not change my personality. I maintained my personality, I maintained who I am. One month after winning the award, I sat down, I asked myself, I started thinking about people that I do not know. People that look up to me and say they want to be like me when they grow up. I started identifying a few things that I needed to change. Instead of complaining every day, I needed to start bringing change. I thought of doing up a documentary. I thought about so many ideas, so many crazy ideas. One idea that was so close to me and that was so close at heart, even when I approached people, they were willing to come on board and help, was mental health. So in April 2018, a photo documentary called My Life in Shadows was born. My Life in Shadows is a photo documentary focusing on people living with mental health challenges in Zambia. I use the term challenge because challenge always has a positive outcome. When I started working on this project, I thought it was going to be an easy journey, but it turned out to be a tough one. It was different from shooting a runway model, it was different from shooting a wedding, it was different from shooting a musical concert, it was different from anything that I've ever done before. And I realized that when I first did my first shoot in Lusaka. The interview was about one hour, 20 minutes, it was one of the hardest one hour, 20 minutes of my life. It included cutting, it included breaks. Usually when I'm doing headshot sessions, it's just five minutes, 30 minutes, I'm done. But this one, we had to go one hour, 20 minutes to just get everything properly done. The stories were different from everything that I've done in that this was a one-on-one -on -one conversation. This was a point where people would tell me things that happened to them from the bottom of the heart. They, they narrated their dark sides to me. I'm a total stranger to them, but they trusted me. They told me things that I never expected to be told. It triggered me to a point where I felt like giving up. But I was like, this is why I chose this. I will continue. I don't want to let people that are helping me down. I have to bring this to light either way. So I posted the first, the first photo that I did on Instagram. I posted the, the photo, wrote the caption, and wrote the story. The response was amazing. I didn't expect to see people come and just talk the way they spoke out on that day. People wrote to me in the inbox, they thought I was a professional psychologist, but I told them I'm just a photographer telling a story. I have no idea about being a psychologist or being a psychiatrist. I do this out of love and out of passion. This is what I have to do. After that, four months after I started doing the documentary, I set up the exhibition for My Life in Shadows, which happened at Copper Belt University, American Corner had a very huge number of youth between the age of 20 and 25. And most of these guys, again, walked up to me and told me how they were feeling. Again, I had to say, I am just a photographer. I'm not a professional psychologist or psychiatrist. The stories that we are told were real, and the people that we used were real. These were stories that were told by them. And having these stories close to students that are at Copper Belt University was like speaking to them in another way. They described to me how they felt being at Copper Belt University, how they felt studying things they did not want to study. I was very much motivated to a point that I wanted to take it a little bit further. That, that point, was another turning point for me to say, 
my life in shadows is here to stay. I kept on shooting for this project, kept on working hard, but trust me, these stories are told by people from different areas. People from places that you do not expect to find a, a, a person depressed. You go from Kitwe to a village where you, you move from a luxurious bus to a motorcycle, to a motorbike. You move from a road, start moving on a river to just go and get these stories. You leave your mattress, comfortable mattress at home, you go and sleep on a, on a mat just to get these stories. Sometimes the stories get to a point where their relatives don't want them to share. Their relatives tell you, you are a satanist, you're here to collect data. I guess that's serious. And right now there are some stories that I haven't got because of the same accusations. So some have been displayed, some haven't been displayed. Despite going through all these challenges in getting all these stories, my life in shadows has brought a lot of help or it has added a lot of impact into people's lives. My life in shadows stories starts in a sad way, but it always ends in a happy way. People always find solutions. People always find comfort to find someone to talk to. My Life in Shadows has inspired young people to always identify their true friends and always identify someone they can talk to and be there for. My Life in Shadows is one of the projects that was so close to me, that is so close to me to a point that I cannot describe how I feel about it. When I started it, I thought it was going to be easy. It gave me a lot of challenges. Up to now, it's still giving me ch challenges, but I'm still going far, and I know it will reach another step that I don't expect to be. It's a project that is self-funded. Uh, it doesn't generate any income. It only gets a uh, few incomes from people that are willing to help out. All these stories that we tell are real, and none of them are scripted. All these stories that are on, on my life in shadows are stories that you find on a day-to-day -day life. My life in shadows changed my view about my community. I started looking at things differently. I started taking people differently. I realized that in life, instead of complaining, you have to break the change. It's not everyone that we see smiling is okay. It's not everyone that we see jumping on up about is okay. Most people go through a lot of deep stuff, a lot of dark thoughts. Hence my life in shadows. So, comes to it. Instead of complaining every day, about what you're seeing in your community. Be the change. Take up that step. Go out. Whatever tool you have to use to bring the change you want to bring, make sure you use that tool. Thank you.